Good morning. Welcome to worship on this, the 11th Sunday in Pentecost. Um, I am Pastor Melinda McVeigh McCluskey. Pastor Joel will be returning from Itasca, Minnesota uh, tomorrow, I believe, and will be back in the office on Tuesday. Our radio broadcast this morning is given in loving memory of Kim from Don and Janice Smith, and we thank them for that. The other announcements, feel free to read in the bulletin, and we are offering up prayers for Owen Solonson, who was in the hospital and has returned back to his apartment. With that, I invite you to stand as you are able. And let us begin worship by confessing our sins and hearing the promise of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. Eternal God, our Creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Amen. You may be seated.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. love you place your gifts before us we eat and are satisfied 
Fill us with this world in all its need, with the life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. reading is from Exodus chapter 16. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did, know, did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read Psalm 8 responsively. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven, raining down manna upon them to eat and giving them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided for them food enough. The Lord caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and powerfully let out the south wind. Raining down flesh upon them like dust and flying birds like the sand of the seas. Letting them fall in the midst of the camp and round about the dwellings. So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 4. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love, making ever, every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says, He ascended, what does it mean but that He had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above the heavens, so that He might fill all things. The gifts He gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for ministry for building up the body of Christ. Into all of us come, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. 
We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is, it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that the God the Father has set his seal. The crowd said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they asked him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. The crowd said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Amen. Week two of Jesus as the bread of life. Kind of a little review from last week, so we set up to where we are today. Last week we heard that the crowd followed Jesus and his disciples. And Jesus went up a mountain, and when we hear about a mountain, we know that God is going to be present. And then Jesus said to the disciples, as those crowd of 5,000 plus people came, how are we going to feed them all? And Jesus knew what he was going to do, but he was testing his disciples to see what their reaction would be. And so with five loaves and two fish, Jesus gave thanks, and these meager items were enough to feed all 5,000 people with, five, with 12 baskets of leftovers. We later learn that Jesus went back up the mountain to get away from the crowd, and the disciples rode across the sea, and when the wind came up, there was Jesus walking towards them. And we learned something that the crowd didn't know last week. The crowd doesn't know that, when, that the importance of Jesus going up the mountain and the crowd doesn't think about the fact that it is near Passover. So we already, in our mind, as this sign is performed, are thinking about Jesus, 
or it's thinking about Moses, the Exodus, and the manna. Something is going to happen. So the morning comes. The crowd looks around. Jesus is gone. The disciples are gone. So once again, they all try to find Jesus. And they get in their boats and they row to Capernaum. And it is at this point that the dialogue between Jesus and the crowd begins. They have questions for Jesus. And remember at the end of the feeding, the crowd recognized Jesus as prophet and they wanted to make him king. But what is their question now, the next day? How did you get here, Jesus? By boat, with the disciples did, right? And Jesus accuses this crowd of opportunism. You are only searching for me because your bellies were full. They had plenty to eat, more than enough to eat. They liked the free meal. You think that's true? That would be true of us, right? A free meal and we were full and it was good. But Jesus pushes the crowd even further by saying, do not work for the food that spoils. Instead, work for the food that brings eternal life. What? The crowd wonders how to get such a food and what they must do. This sounds pretty good. So Jesus, what do we do to get that food? And Jesus' answer is quite simple. Believe. Just believe in the one God sent. That totally confuses the crowd. Who did God send? And it's at this point that the crowd starts to put what happened at the feeding, the bread, the manna, together with the story of the exodus from Egypt. It's at this point the crowd understands that Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt and God provided. God provided for their needs by sending manna from heaven, bread from heaven. They were hungry, they were ready to go back to Egypt. The flesh pots were more interesting to eat than to stay here in the wilderness. And it's through that trust in God that they had food, manna from heaven. All the people needed to do, all the Israelites needed to do was trust that God would send bread in the morning, water for their thirst, and quail for their meat in the evening. That's all they had to do was trust God. So the crowd understands what happened in the past very well. They know what happened as Moses led the Israelites through the wilderness. Bread, quail, water was provided. Their needs by trusting in God were met. What the crowd doesn't see and what they often, what we often forget is what Jesus offers to us now in this moment. Not the past, but today. That's what the crowd couldn't grasp what Jesus was offering for them at that time. So the crowd says, you know, well, yeah, you fed us, so give us another sign that you're somebody important. That wasn't good enough, feeding 5,000 people with five loaves. We want something more. Now we need to remember what a sign is. You've all seen billboards, right? Out on the road. They advertise what? Hotels, restaurants, all kinds of things. Does the sign give us what we want? But the sign points to what we can do to fulfill that need. Jesus performed a sign that said, I am sent from God and they want another one. The crowd sees the sign, but all they see is their full bellies. They don't see who Jesus is. So the crowd is stuck 
in God's glorious grace of the past, what God did for them in the past in that wilderness, but they can't see God's presence in the present. Martin Luther makes a point in some of his writings, and he says this, that it is our walk with God today in the present that is important. Yes, the past is important. It makes us who we are, we learn from it, but the future of the church, our future lies in looking at the present and what God is doing. So often we hear, oh, in the past our church was this, and our past our church was that. We get so caught up in what we don't have today that we had in the past that we close our eyes to what is happening in our world and in our midst and in our church today. I'm just going to share one part of what's been happening the last few years here at Salem. We have a wonderful youth program. We worked and got reorganized what was Sunday school and called it faith formation and updated it to what our needs are today. And we have a good attendance. We have lots of students learning. We have all kinds of activities where kids are learning about their faith. We have a confirmation program that has developed where kids actually, I think, sometimes look forward to confirmation. And if you've worked with 7th and 8th graders, you sometimes wonder if they get anything, right? And then it comes to faith formation night, and they read their faith statements, and you go, they got it. They know what faith is about. We've worked, this last year, we've worked and put together a play and pray. It's for kids from birth to four-year-old. And what that is about is the little kids come with mom and dad. Mom and dad get some coffee. The kids get to play. They read a Bible story, and they pray. And they might do a craft. It's kind of an introduction to Sunday school, to faith formation. And it gives parents a time to kind of talk about how they are forming faith with their young kids. Now, the exciting part that started this summer is we had kids go to the youth gathering. The high school kids went, and they are on fire to do something for the church and gather together as a group. We've got that fire. They want to be a part of the church. They want to learn about God. Did you know all that was going on? Isn't that exciting? That's the present. That's what God is working through the Holy Spirit to create. And there are other ministries that are being created in the church. We are the church. We are celebrating God's presence today. Yes, the past is important, but we need to look at where God is working today. Now the crowd misunderstands Jesus. We want to sign now and we want that gift right this minute. They want to control the gift that God has given them. And receiving the gift that God is giving is not about our human effort or what we can do. No, receiving the gift that God offers takes divine effort. It's about what God can do in us. You see, being centered on the belly is a lot more than just seeking food. It is an attitude that keeps us wanting control, that wants us to tell God what to do and when. I'm sure you've all heard the saying and seen little memes that say, I want patience, God, and I want it right this minute. How many of us have said that? Mm -hmm. We want it on our terms. Rather than seek God's grace on God's terms. So what is the question for us in this reading today? What does it mean for Jesus to be manna? 
Or you might say, how is Jesus like the manna? The crowd misunderstands what Jesus has to offer in the present, the present time. They don't quite understand how what happened in the past is happening in the present in a new way. The benefits of the bread that Jesus provides them for their bellies are the same as the bread of Jesus. Both provide life to those who trust enough to follow God's word. The bread Jesus blessed and gave to the crowd and Jesus himself are whom are the bread of life. Both of those provide bread, provide life to you today. You see, God provided food and water to the Israelites as they wandered the wilderness. There was no food or no water available, and yet God provided. They just needed to trust. And Jesus, too, can satisfy our hunger and thirst. Remember the woman at the well who asked for the living water? It's about trusting that Jesus will fulfill our thirst and satisfy our hunger. Manna for the Israelites was bread that rained down from heaven and trusting God. Manna as Jesus is to trust Jesus as the source of life. Jesus inspires trust and life in those who partake of his bread at the table which we will do today. When we receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, we hear, come to the table, the table is ready. And we teach at, at First Communion class, we come to the table with our hands out and our eyes up so that when those presenting the bread say, the body of Christ for you, we are looking eye to eye that for you, yes, it's for everybody, but it's for you. It's for you. We hear the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. God's promise comes to us. It comes in a very unexpected and surprising way. It came as a baby. It comes to us in Jesus, and it comes to us in bread, the bread of life. Amen.
confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in our loving and almighty God, who abundantly provides the bread of life to all who hunger, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, you give gifts and talents to every member of the church. Strengthen all your children and bring them to a full understanding and maturity in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, our complex and wonderful world is a sure sign of your abundance and care. Provide for every creature and rain down the bread of heaven that gives life to the world. Lord, in your mercy, Peaceful God, draw the nations of the world to harmony and mutual understanding. Bind all of humanity in the unity of love and peace that comes through the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we pray for those who are hungry and homeless and who have lost family or friends. Lead them to places of safety, food, and rest. We pray especially for Owen and all those we name in our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Your Merciful God, you have brought us all together in this time and place. Bless this congregation, including those who are absent, and draw us into closer communion with you, each other in our community. Lord, in your mercy. Your Infinite God, we praise you for the lives of those who have died in Christ. Keep our hearts in hope, for we have all received the food that endures to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Your Almighty and loving God, we look to you in hope and trust, knowing that you will do far more than we can ask or imagine. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace. At this time, we will collect the offering. <laughs>
Let us pray. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, let us eat, for now the feast is spread.
Let us pray. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice. May we thirst for your way of peace. For you are Lord forevermore. Amen. And now a blessing. May the God of love, which gives life to the world, sustain you. May the bread of life, Jesus Christ, feed you with the food that endures to eternal life. May the power of the Holy Spirit nourish and strengthen you in faith. Amen. God.